Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we'll be doing a follow-up on Steve's Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark coverage from yesterday with a look at how the game performs with ray tracing. For that, and I'm super excited about this, we do have AMD's new Radeon RX 6800 XT graphics card which does support hardware accelerated ray tracing. So it'll be super cool to check out how AMD's first gen ray tracing features work in cyber... Wait, what? But you're telling me this... GPU is not supported in Cyberpunk 2077 for ray tracing, but it says here on the box, it says hardware ray tracing support. You, it's just grayed out. But isn't it a, a DXR enabled game? Shouldn't that just work with with all GPU? No, it's just grayed out. Okay. Well, I'll put that in the bin later, I guess. As for now, I guess we'll need to uh, one of these to run ray tracing. Uh, and also DLSS in Cyberpunk 2077. Jokes aside, apparently this game will be updated with support for AMD GPUs at some point in the future, but for now you will need an NVIDIA RTX GPU for running ray tracing, and today we'll be looking at performance across all main consumer RTX GPUs in a variety of ray trace settings, but before we get to that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. IPS is renowned for producing some of the best colors available for gaming monitors, but it's always come at a trade-off. MSI has taken their engineering to a whole new level with the introduction of a revolutionary rapid IPS panel that's backed with Quantum Dot technology. For the first time ever, the new MSI Optics MAG274QRF-QD gives you game-changing speed with unprecedented color accuracy that our class is the best of the best that we've tested here on the channel. Revel in rich, deep, incredible color and push your gaming to its limits with 1 millisecond greater gray response times and ultra fast 165 hertz refresh rates. If a gaming monitor could be described as coming close to perfect, this would be it. So learn more about MSI's new Optics MAG274QRF-QD monitor via the links below. At this point, I hope most people are aware how visually stunning Cyberpunk 2077 looks. This is certainly one of, if not the most graphically impressive games that I've ever seen, and it does look especially good with ray tracing enabled. That's not to say the game looks bad without ray tracing, it still looks absolutely incredible, but ray tracing does elevate the game's visuals and provide a noticeable improvement. The game itself has ray tracing split into three settings. There's ray traced reflections, ray traced shadows, and ray traced lighting, the latter of which has three different modes. Reflections, to my eyes, is the biggest setting in the game, providing the most substantial visual upgrade over standard rasterization. What's most impressive about the way Cyberpunk handles ray traced reflections is how many surfaces reflections get applied to. It's not just the regular glass, puddles, and water, but a whole range of surfaces that include the more matte elements and metals. While many of these surfaces still receive screen space reflections to some extent and look great without ray tracing, turning on ray traced reflections delivers a next level experience that noticeably improves the overall visual quality. The way reflections are handled on glass is especially impressive, however there are some issues like the lack of any reflections for your player character, which is a bit bizarre but apparently was too performance intensive to include. At other times you will see some noticeable pop in with reflections as lighting or geometry is added or subtracted as you move the camera around, and that's a fairly common issue that we see from ray tracing in today's games. But of course there are a wealth of issues with screen space reflections too, so compromises are always a part of today's graphics. Ray trace shadows are applied from either the sun or moon as a light source only, and compared to running ultra rasterized shadows, this is a subtle difference. Ray trace shadows can be sharper and are overall more accurate, but regular shadows are still highly impressive. The ray trace lighting setting combines ambient occlusion, diffuse illumination, and if you use the psycho setting, global illumination. This is more noticeable than ray trace shadows but still is on the more subtle end of the scale, especially when outdoors during the day. With ray traced lighting off, some areas have an unnatural glow and at other times this setting can actually add lighting back into the scene. The differences between medium and ultra lighting are the most subtle and for most people looking to run ray tracing but save on performance, you'll be fine with the medium setting here. As for DLSS, we have a range of settings in the game from quality through to ultra performance. Each of these settings reduces the game's render resolution, then uses reconstruction to bring it back up to your target resolution. At 4K, quality renders at 1440p, performance at 1080p, balanced in between those two, and ultra performance way down at 720p. You'll see similar ratios at other target resolutions. DLSS quality is most similar to native resolution at all target resolutions, and is the setting we recommend people to use in all situations. To break this down simply, the quality mode isn't quite as good as native rendering for close-up detail, but does a good job at matching or even beating native rendering for more distant fine detail. 
On a few occasions, DLSS was able to bring back lost detail at native rendering, but at other times the image wasn't as strong. At settings below quality, DLSS is not equivalent to native rendering. Particularly at 1440p, DLSS performance is quite blurry compared to the quality mode or native, and as this applies to the entire image and to my eyes doesn't look great, I'd avoid using it. I should note here that the differences probably aren't showing up on YouTube due to YouTube's lack of bitrate, which harms fine detail in these recordings. I've also seen numerous reports of rendering glitches and artifacts using DLSS in this game, which is something to be aware of and will hopefully get patched out over time, along with the game's many other bugs. Throughout the performance section of this video, my goal is to look at NVIDIA's entire RTX lineup and see what sort of GPU you will need for playing with various different ray traced settings at various different resolutions. I've run all testing in today's video on my Core i9-10900K test rig with 16GB of dual channel DDR4 memory, and I'm using of course the latest drivers. Our benchmark pass here is the same as Steve described in his video, which is at night in the rain with a wide variety of effects present. We'll start here with 1440p gaming, and these are our baseline results with the ultra preset and DLSS quality enabled, but with no ray tracing. In this configuration, pretty much all of the RTX lineup delivers a playable experience, although the RTX 2060 is more like a 50fps card which won't be acceptable to some gamers. Here are the results using what I'm calling minimum ray tracing, which is just having reflections enabled. In my opinion, if you want to dip your toes into ray tracing, the best way to do this is with reflections, as it has a noticeable visual improvement and surprisingly isn't as performance intensive as the other settings. From here, you can add effects to improve visuals, which we'll talk about in a moment. If you want a 60fps experience using ray tracing at this resolution, you'll need to have at least an RTX 2080 Ti in your setup to achieve that level of performance. The RTX 3080 and 3090 are strong performers here, but the RTX 3070 isn't as much. That's because if you are using the Ultra preset with ray tracing, 8GB of VRAM is right on the edge in this title and actually does limit performance to some extent. Having the 11GB VRAM buffer of the 2080 Ti is superior for ray tracing in this game, despite both the 3070 and 2080 Ti delivering about the same performance without ray tracing enabled. GPUs below this, like the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 2080, are not hitting 60fps on average, so you'll need to compromise in some way. That might be in terms of performance, you may be fine putting up with below 60 FPS, although nearly 90% of people we polled said they were not happy with this level of performance. Alternatively, you can drop visuals. This could be dropping the overall preset to high or medium or reducing DLSS quality, but either way, ray tracing on cards below 2080 Ti levels of performance at 1440p is going to be compromised in some way. If you run the medium ray traced preset, which swaps out ray traced reflections for shadows and medium lighting, performance is slightly worse in our benchmark pass than just using reflections. I don't feel this preset is the best demonstration of ray tracing in the game, and like I said, you should probably start with reflections, then add lighting, not the other way around. If you want to run reflections and medium lighting at the same time, the requirements in terms of GPU horsepower increase. At this point, the RTX 2080 Ti is no longer a 60fps GPU, although the RTX 3080 and 3090 are still very playable with an average over 60fps. Cards in the lower RTX range like the RTX 2070 are now delivering a console-like 30fps experience. As for ultra ray tracing, for that you'll definitely need either an RTX 3080 or 3090 for 1440p gaming at 60fps. Other GPUs simply can't keep up here, and even the 3080 is teetering on the edge of acceptable performance. While we didn't do extensive testing of the Psycho mode, expect that to require an RTX 3090. Here is a brief look at the performance drop you can expect from the various ray tracing modes. With the RTX 3080, enabling minimum ray tracing with just reflections will reduce performance by 29% at 1440p, as opposed to 33% when using the medium RT preset. If you want both reflections and medium lighting, expect to shave off a further 12% from the reflection only numbers, while ultra ray tracing takes its toll with a 44% reduction compared to no ray tracing at all. On the RTX 2080 Ti, the numbers are much the same, although the performance drop is slightly higher on this GPU, with at least a 30% reduction and up to a 47% drop with ultra ray tracing. So you'll need to have good baseline performance to turn on ray tracing in this game. At 4K, well, it's not good news for owners of any RTX GPU. Even with just ray traced reflections enabled, the RTX 3090 does not deliver a 60fps experience with DLSS quality, while the RTX 3070 is already sitting below 60fps and quite constrained by just 8GB of VRAM. 
4K with ray tracing in this title is really a future looking mode. This is something to revisit in the future generations when we have more powerful ray tracing GPUs. Right now, if you do want to play at 4K with ray tracing, you will need to compromise on visual quality or just accept lower performance. Again, you might want to experiment with lower DLSS settings or reducing the regular visual preset. As for 4K ray tracing with the Ultra preset, this is a seriously performance intensive mode with not even the 3090 delivering a 40 FPS experience. Even with a variable refresh rate display, this is a very sluggish experience and honestly, you should turn down the settings to get 60 FPS. Like I said earlier, this is really meant for future GPUs with improved levels of performance. There's better news at 1080p. With just ray traced reflections, the Ultra preset and DLSS quality, the game is accessible to most RTX GPU owners at an acceptable level of performance. The RTX 2060 Super and RTX 2070 are right on the edge here with a sub 60 FPS average, but provided you have a 2070 Super or higher, 1080p gaming in this title is decent. But there's bad news for owners of the RTX 2060. We did mention this in our 2060 review way back when it was released, but we're seeing the reality of the situation now. This GPU is insufficient for ray tracing in modern titles. The main limitation here is VRAM. Just 6GB of VRAM is not enough for ultra settings plus ray tracing, so you'll have to pretty significantly compromise on other visuals if you want to run ray tracing on a 2060. And this will continue to happen with other first gen RTX GPUs as games become more intensive and utilize more ray tracing effects. The 2060 Super and 2070 are next in line. Speaking of the 2070, this GPU is not sufficient for ultra level ray tracing at 1080p. For that, you'll need an RTX 3060 Ti or better, with the RTX 2080 Super providing a borderline experience. If there's anything that tells you just how performance intensive ray tracing is in this title, or alternatively how lacking first gen RTX GPUs were for ray tracing performance, it's that a $700 GPU from just a few years ago isn't capable of ultra ray tracing in this title at even 1080p with DLSS enabled. Luckily for buyers today, and if you are indeed lucky enough to find one on sale, the RTX 3060 Ti isn't too bad in this title at this resolution. Now a brief look at DLSS performance in this title, with the RTX 3070 and ray traced reflections at 1440p. DLSS is really key to performance with ray tracing enabled. As you can see that at 1440p with DLSS disabled, the RTX 3070 is really only a 30fps GPU. Turning DLSS on to the quality mode improves performance to 58 FPS, and it increases up to 76 FPS with the performance mode, although we wouldn't recommend it at this resolution due to the quality. At 4K, you might need to turn down the DLSS settings to performance with this GPU to get adequate frame rates, but you can see that the performance improvement is very significant over DLSS disabled. In fact, the game is a slideshow without DLSS enabled and hits a heavy VRAM limitation, but at least with DLSS rendering the game at lower resolutions, it is able to exceed 30 FPS, which is a substantial performance improvement. So at this point, you probably have all the information you need about ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077, at least as it stands right now. I'm interested to revisit this topic later once AMD GPUs are supported in the game, but for now, we have a pretty comprehensive look at how Nvidia fares for both ray tracing and DLSS. From a visual standpoint, I think Cyberpunk is the best showcase of ray tracing that we have yet, aside from perhaps some of those fully path traced titles. The game looks excellent with ray tracing enabled, and especially the reflection setting does noticeably improve the visual quality in my opinion, with more realistic lighting also possible through the other settings. This is not a shadow of the Tomb Raider where often the differences are negligible, ray tracing in this game is a strong visual upgrade on the regular rasterization settings. It's also a title that makes sense to have ray tracing in, as part of the game's key focus is offering next-gen visuals, and it's not a fast-paced competitive shooter like Fortnite where ray tracing is pretty pointless. At the same time, I've heard people calling ray tracing transformative or a game changer in this title, and I disagree. The visuals are also very stunning with ray tracing enabled, so those on less powerful mid-range GPUs can still enjoy a breathtaking experience. I expect a lot, if not most people, to play with ray tracing disabled as they simply don't have the GPU power, and you're still going to enjoy the gameplay and experience overall. So in that sense, I don't think it's a game changer, although it's definitely still a showcase for ray tracing and the best example that we have to date. I think the small handful of AMD Radeon RX 6000 series owners out there should though feel a bit annoyed that Cyberpunk doesn't even allow you to enable ray tracing on AMD GPUs. DXR is meant to be a vendor agnostic open platform, so locking down features doesn't feel right to me. Even if performance is terrible, at least allowing AMD owners to try it out would have been nice. 
Speaking of the performance story, Cyberpunk 2077, as we know, is quite punishing on GPUs. If you want an uncompromised ray tracing experience, albeit with DLSS, at 1440p, you'll need at least an RTX 2080 Ti for a decent experience, or an RTX 3080 for ultra-level ray tracing. 4K is pretty much out of the question right now, while at 1080p down to about an RTX 2070 or 2070 Super is where you can get in on ray tracing. In all other scenarios, you'll need to compromise other areas of visuals to enjoy ray tracing, whether that's playing with lower DLSS quality, lower resolution, or lower graphic settings. I think this will be particularly disappointing and painful for those that bought an RTX 2080 or 2080 Super at launch for $700. These GPUs really aren't powerful enough for 1440p ray tracing unless you make these compromises, and I don't think too many people bought a $700 GPU for 1080p gaming. It's also important to note that VRAM is a big consideration in this title, with ray tracing enabled. It's the primary reason why the RTX 2060 runs so poorly, and it also causes limitations for the RTX 3070, with 8GB of VRAM being right on the edge at ultra settings. The RTX 2080 Ti, despite delivering similar performance without ray tracing enabled, is the clear faster GPU with ray tracing enabled thanks to its 11GB VRAM buffer. DLSS, as usual, delivers a pretty good experience using the DLSS quality mode, and while I wouldn't describe it as identical to native rendering, in some areas it's better and others it's worse, but I wouldn't advise running on lower DLSS settings, particularly at lower resolutions like 1440p or 1080p, because quality does fall away noticeably. Performance though is very good with DLSS enabled, and really the game is basically unplayable with ray tracing at native rendering on most RTX GPUs. Anyway, that's it for this one, and another benchmark video for Cyberpunk 2077. We do have a few other things planned for this particular game, so subscribe to the channel, come back and check out those videos when they are ready and up on the channel. We do appreciate all the support that we're getting right now, and also from our Patreon and Floatplane members. If you're interested in signing up and supporting the channel, you can do so in the links below, in the description below, of course. And yeah, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one.